Hey, 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 in today's video, we are encrypting files with Golang. So in my root directory of this project, I have the img.png file, which I'm going to now encrypt. So as you can see, I can, I can see the file now, right? But if I encrypt it, so I'll say, go run encrypt, uh, and I'll say img.png, which is the name of the file I want to encrypt. And I'll enter some password, it'll confirm the password and it'll, it'll encrypt it for me and say it'll say file successfully protected and now as you can see I can't see it anymore, I can't see the file anymore. But now if I go and if I just decrypt the same file, it will ask me to enter the password, it'll say file successfully decrypted and now again, sorry, now again I can see the image, awesome right? So how is this happening? So let me, let me take you through it. So in the beginning, what will happen is we will accept the uh, arguments from user, which is uh, the basically the file, the path to the file or the file name. We'll validate if the file even exists or not. And we'll also ask the user for the password. And we'll validate the password in the sense that both the passwords match. This is for the encryption part, right? We'll check if both the passwords match, password one and password two. Then we'll encrypt the file, and then for decrypt, we'll again check the password, and after getting the password, we'll check the password, okay? So it's really straightforward. From a 10,000 feet perspective, this is what's happening. You're just getting arguments from the user, validating the file, getting the password from the user, encrypting the file by validating the password, and then decrypting the file with the same password. That's what's happening. But if you look uh, more, if you look a bit deeper, then you have two parts, encryption and decryption. In the encryption part, uh, we follow multiple steps. So we first check for the source file. We open the, that source file, the one with the plain text, which was img.png, and then we'll re read that plain text. Now it could be the data from the PNG or it could be a text file, right? Well, whatever it is, it's basically plain data from the source file. Then we'll create an empty uh, variable called a nonce. Uh, this will be 12 bits uh, or 12 bytes in our in our case, and we'll create we'll randomize it. So we'll create a random basically 12 byte uh, variable. We'll because we want to use it uh, later on. So firstly, you have the password that we'll use to encrypt the file, right? So the, the password, and then there's something called as the byte length in the sense uh, what do you want to get after running a derivation function. So we'll basically be running a password based derivation function. I'll talk more about it. But the first thing you need is a password. The next thing you need is the byte length. Uh, in our case, it'll be 32. Then the algorithm with which we want to encrypt it and the number of iterations. In our case, it will be like some, somewhere around 4,000 iterations. Iterations basically make it more difficult for the party that wants to uh, hack this or, or uh, break the encryption. It just makes it more difficult for them, okay? So uh, with the password based key derivation function, this is a function in which a key will be generated from the password. So we'll take in the password and we'll add in a few different things as you can see and we'll get a key and this can be used as an encryption key or the hash value. So we're basically just hashing the password. Now this is very similar to how you um, take the user's password, you hash it and then you store it in the database, right? Because you don't want to store the uh, passwords directly in the database because otherwise people can steal or get access to the database steal all the passwords, right? So you always hash the passwords with some salt and that's what's happening here, right? So uh, <clears throat> this is the salt in this case, the nuns. So with the password based key derivation function, you get something called as a derived key. Now the derived key, we'll run it past uh, AES or advanced encryption standard. This will give us some solid encryption cap uh, abilities after, after getting the key from the password. And we'll, and this, by, by running it through the AES, AES cipher, we'll get something called as a cipher block. And that again, we'll run from, uh, through something called as the uh, Galois counter mode. Now, this is spelled as G-A-L-O-I-S, but I think this is like a French word, so you say Galois, Galois <laughs> or something like that. I'm not French, so I have no idea. Uh, so it's the GCM, uh, I call it the GCM, Galois counter mode, whatever, blah, 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 but it's GCM basically, right? And GCM gives you more encryption with data integrity checks. Now, GCM generates a tag which is appended to the cy cipher text at the end. And this tag is used to verify the integrity upon data encryption. Now, you had some data, you encrypted it, but then how do you know that the data that you got back is the, actually the correct data? And that's why we are using GCM because that uh, gives us the tag to verify the integrity of the, of the data upon decryption. 
And GCM uses AES. So we, as, as you know, we have already used AES before. It uses AES to encrypt the plain text. This operates in a counter mode and hence the name and, and generates a stream of encrypted blocks. That's what GCM does. Finally, we use this uh, function called AES GCM, which uh, AES GCM is what you get. So you, you already had the AES cipher, uh, which is the cipher block. Then you run it through GCM, you get AES GCM and you run this function called AES GCM dot seal. This is the main function. Now this is uh, just to use this function. We had to do all of this basically all of this part uh, because you wanted to run this function called the seal function. And the seal function is what takes the plain text from our file from our IMG file or any other file and converts it into ciphertext and it then creates a source file for encrypted data and we write ciphertext to the new source file. So the, the file in our case remains the same but then again we have to create the source file for the encrypted data and write the ciphertext. Ciphertext is basically text that we can't then access right so that will be written to the source file. So that's the encryption. Now let's go over the decryption. The, for the decryption uh, it's very very similar. Uh, we'll check for the encrypted file. So here we were checking for the source file that had to be encrypted and now we'll be checking for the encrypted file because uh, to our uh, program we will be saying that hey this is the encrypted file please decrypt it for me. So we'll check for the encrypted file, we'll open that file, we'll read the cipher text from the encrypted file, right? The text that we can't open in our IDE but it still can be read from our function. Now to convert the cipher text into uh, regular plain text. We have to again run the password based key activation function. So we'll have to have the same password which we use to encrypt. We'll have to have the same password to decrypt it, uh, decrypt it as well. Same byte length, same algorithm, SHA-1 and the number of iterations should also be the same. And then the nuns, uh, as you remember, we created a nuns here, a randomized nuns and uh, the, the GCM basically uh, appended the nuns to the cipher text and exactly that's what we want. We want to get the nuns from here. Uh, which will be at the end. So the, the last 12 digits of the encrypted file will have the nuns. We want access to that. So all of these uh, five things we'll pass to the password uh, based key derivation function. We'll get the derived key. Again the same thing AES cipher will get the cipher block GCM will get uh, AES GCM. Now we did again we did all of this. So this was important obviously you know that you have to use salt to hash the password this is perfect but these extra steps we only did because we wanted to use this AES GCM dot open function which takes in the cipher text to this function without the nuns obviously and gets you back the plain text. Now the plain text is what you will write again to a file which will have the decrypted data or the other plain text and that's the one that you will write back to the file and that's how you'll be able to read the file again. So that's what's happening in your encryption and decryption. So in our program in the code what we'll need to have is we'll need to um, do all of this like the whole entire logic for the encrypt function and the entire logic for the decryption function and I'll keep opening this diagram again and again in between just so that we are able to refer it while we are writing the code but the program also needs to do all of this. So we'll uh, the way I'm thinking of it is that I'll need one file which will have the encryption decryption functions and I'll need one file which is the main.go file which will, ha will have all of this thing which will print out stuff to the terminal and accept uh, values from the user from the terminal. So all of that logic I'll put in main.go file. Okay. So now we can start writing our code. Now before we start writing our code just want to tell you that um, on my channel this particular video that we're creating right now will show up in the 48 killer Golang project series. So this is a playlist which basically is uh, which has uh, 48 projects now but I'll add this one so it'll be 49 projects and um, this playlist right is in the order of difficulty. So uh, we have smaller uh, simpler programs earlier and then more difficult programs later on. This will be somewhere in the middle it's not or, or somewhere towards the end but not at the complete end because this is not very difficult to build what we're building today. Uh, so um, just make sure you, you go through all the videos in this playlist and you build them one by one and once you've done that you will know Golang better than more, uh, better than 90 percent of the people or 99 percent of the people actually out there because I mean uh, how many people do you know who build like 50, 50 projects in Golang right? Not many. So this will seriously give you an edge if you build all the projects in this playlist. All right. If, and and uh, I also wanted to tell you one more thing that if you go to my channel, uh, you get access to this Discord link here. As you can see, this is the Discord link for this community out here, which is uh, where we discuss a lot of stuff around Golang and we share our learnings, what we've been learning today, 
uh, we have a lot of uh, like uh, forums where we uh, discuss issues uh, that we're that we're facing blah 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 so a lot of, lot of stuff here so uh, a lot of cool discussions happening so make sure you join this because uh, I, I mean if you want to learn if you want to learn golang this is the right place to be this is the right community to be at all right because i'm here quite a lot as you can see it's always open on my browser these days so i'm always there replying to messages all right so uh, i have now talked through all the things that i wanted to talk through so now is the time to start building the project. What I'll now do is I'll create a new uh, directory called go file encryption. By the way, this program, this project already exists on my GitHub. So in case uh, <clears throat> you are, are already following me on GitHub, uh, you will see this program there, the file encryption one. Uh, in case I don't put the link to this project in my description of this video, uh, please know that my GitHub is Akhil Sharma 90, A-K-H-I-L, S-H-A-R-M-A 90. The project is there. In case you get stuck somewhere, um, you can access the code, you can look at the code and build along with me, all right? So here I will CD into it. I will CD into go file encryption. And we will say go mod in it github.com slash sharma 90 slash go file encryption. This creates a um, go.mod file for us, which will have the list of all our dependencies. And I will just go ahead and open this up in my code editor. Here I'll just create a uh, main.go file and I'll create a folder for file crypt and there will be a file called file crypt. <clears throat> okay. Now I told you that I'll divide the logic into two different parts. One will be the uh, interfacing with the user part and the other will be the actual encryption and decryption. So let's talk about the part where we accept user values. So we first start with, sorry, <laughs> package main, not myth. We start with package main, all right? And there will obviously be func main, which is from, so main is the most important file, may not go as the most important file, which is obviously the main package again, and then it has the main function, which is where the uh, program begins from or origins everything starts from here and then this is why from this function we have to call all the other functions this is like the root or the source of everything then there will be an import statement here and i'll import multiple uh, packages in a while so firstly i want to check if the length of the arguments now to, uh, to work with arguments to print out messages to the cli we could use something like cobra which is a cli tool and i've uh, and i already have uh, projects with that I think uh, that's very commonly used in Golang as you know Cobra uh, we're not using it here because we have like very few operations and we can do that uh, on our own we don't need to import a complete library just to print out stuff to the terminal and to work with some arguments right and uh, here we're just checking if the length of the arguments is less than two if it is less than two then we'll print help In print help, we'll basically print out. Uh, so there's a function called print help. It's print help, which basically tells the user on how to actually use this uh, project. So if he's not, if the user is not uh, entering, let's say encrypt or decrypt and the name of the file, that means he doesn't know how to use this function, right? So he'll just print help out in that scenario. And the other thing is function equal to os dot args one, and we'll switch function. So what do you want to do? So do you want help? If you want help, we'll just print help. We'll just call the print help function. If you want to encrypt. we will call the encrypt handle function 
if you want to decrypt we will call the decrypt handle function and then there is a default which is run encrypt to encrypt a file and decrypt to decrypt a file right just telling the user that hey please run encrypt to encrypt the file and decrypt to decrypt the file okay so that is our main function now as you know we're calling three functions from the main function was the print help encrypt handle and decrypt handle so we're going to call we're going to create all those functions uh, so we have the we'll have the encrypt handle function and we'll have the decrypt Handle function. There are three more functions that we'll need in the encrypt handle. There is the um, get password to get the password from the user, and then we have the validate. Uh, so we have the get password function. We have the validate file and validate password functions. So let me create those. Public password and trunk validate validate file. <coughs> Okay, so in the print help, print help is going to be very straightforward. So I'll just go ahead and copy and paste. Actually, you don't have to write this whole thing on your own. So this is basically saying file encryption, simple file encryptor for your day-to-day -day needs, uh, which is the name of the program and then what it does. And then showing you usage that you can uh, go run. And uh, when we say dot, basically means it runs all the files in uh, at the root, which is our main.go and also our file.crypt.go. Uh, folder or package and it will basically uh, you want to pass the path to your file in our case we'll just say img.png which will be a file that I'll copy and paste here you can copy and paste any file here I'm just using this apple file here and then you have the commands the commands like encrypt decrypt and help we will have three commands encrypt will encrypt a file with a given password decrypt tries to decrypt a file using a password and help which displays the help text which is uh, this particular function gets called there. Now for the encrypt handle, which is the most important one, uh, sorry, the encrypt and decrypt actually are both uh, really important because that's the logic, main logic. So here we'll check if os dot, if the length of os dot args is less than three. That means uh, you have written, you have written that uh, if you, you want to run the program and you want to encrypt but you've not passed the uh, the past the file right? so it's arguments are less than three then you will print ln you will print out missing the path to the file for more info run um so encrypt will say run the help command all right and os dot exit zero if everything is all right then what you want to do is you want to get the arguments or which is basically the uh arguments at the second index which is the third argument uh, which in our case is the path to the file you want to get it in this variable called file and you want to validate so if not validate file and you pass the file there and you just panic file not found
So, what happens in the validate file function? And this gets called it. Basically, it takes in the file which is string and it passes back a boolean which is that is how we are checking it here you know true or false this exclamation helps us check that. So, if it is not uh, valid then we say file not found ok and how does it return the boolean it is basically using the os dot stat function on the file and saying if error equal to os dot is not exist return false if it does not exist return false if it exists return true that is how we are checking for it out here. So, for the encrypt part we have checked um, the validity of the file and not found. Now, the next step is to ask for the password. So, we will say password is equal to get password right. So, we already have the get password function. So, what does it do? It returns the password which is a slice of bytes. And how does it accept the password? It says first it prints out enter password, then it is going to use the terminal terminal package to read the password and going to capture that in the password variable. So, when you if you remember when we were encrypting the file we did not only just accept the password we also asked the user for the confirm password as in confirm this password. So, you want to print that out as well. So, you are going to say slash n confirm password and we want to again read the password ok and this will be password 2. And here is where we will validate if the password 1 and password 2 are the same they are matching. So, we will say if not validate password which we will pass password 1 and password 2. Basically, this function, the validate password function, should return back to us a boolean. And here we will say fmt dot print passwords. Do not match. Please try again. Return get password. If the passwords do not match, we want this function, the get password function to be called again and again ask the pass, uh, the user the password. So, if everything went well, we just want to return the password from here which is a slice of bytes ok. Now, in the validate password function, let us come here. So, it is going to accept something called as password 1 which is a slice of bytes and password 2 which is again a slice of bytes return back a boolean and in here we want to check if the bytes are equal if everything is equal in password 1 and password 2. If it is not equal return false if it is equal return true. So, that is our return uh, validate password function which got called here and we will go back now to our encrypt handle. So, after calling the uh, the get password function, we will say fmt dot print ln will inform the user that hey we have started encrypting the file. So, we will say encrypting and we will use the file crypt package. The file crypt package is our own, we will create the file crypt package out here. So, we will say file crypt dot encrypt because we will have the encrypt function. We will pass it the file and the password and we will print out fmt dot print ln. We will say 
file success will be protected. So that's our encrypt handle function. Now in the decrypt handle function, we will again check the same thing, which is this. Like has he given us the file, uh, the part of the file? If not, we want to exit, and we want to then validate the file again. Yeah. Uh, uh, um. And you have to ask the user for his password. So we'll say if and dot print enter password and we want to say password terminal dot read password. And after taking the password, we'll just print out, instead of encrypting, we'll just print out decrypting. And instead of encrypt file, the uh, function, the encrypt function, we'll just call the decrypt function, passing the file and password. And here, instead of protected, we'll just say decrypted. Perfect. So we have the encrypt handle and decrypt handle functions. Perfectly ready, get password, valid password, validate file, and encrypt handle, print help, and name. Now, in the import statement, we should have um, all the files, which file crypt is my own package, which I'll get from here. The xterm package is the one that we're using here, term. Uh, the one that we're getting to, to using to read the password and then we have bytes fmt and os okay so that's how it is now i can already see some issues and errors and some of them should go away once i've completed my file crypt.go file but then there will be many others uh, that we fix not a problem and now let's go ahead and start working on our file crypt.go file so starting with the file crypt.go this package is going to be called file crypt And we'll import some packages, of course. Then we have two functions. One is the encrypt function, as you know. And the other is going to the decrypt function. Okay. Because from here, we are calling the encrypt and the decrypt functions. So in the encrypt handle and decrypt handle respectively, you call the encrypt function from file crypt and the decrypt function from file crypt. Those are the ones that we are working on at the moment. So in the e encrypt function, you take in the source which is string and the password which is byte, it is a slice of bytes. Okay. So now this uh, source in our case is the file, right? Because if you check here, we're sending the file and the password. So file and the password, right? So for the file, we want to check if the file, let me actually open up the browser and show you the diagram again. And we'll follow the exact same steps. So here it is, we will check for the source, open the source file, read plain text from the source file, create an empty nuns, randomize nuns. Let's do, let's do those steps. So first is os.stat, then the source, os. is not exist. And if it doesn't exist, we are just going to return an error. So first we checked for the file. 
now we'll open up that file. So we'll say OS dot open source and we'll capture that or store that in source file and if error is not equal to nil panic error at the end of this program when this function stops running we want to also close that source file so that's why we'll say differ source file dot close now we'll read all the plain text from the source file. So to read the plain text from the source file, we'll use io dot read all and source file. What you get back is plain text, and now we'll handle the error also. If error is not equal to nil. Panic. Now the password that you have, you want to store it in a variable because we want to work with it. So we'll say key is equal to password. And now we'll create an empty nonce. So this is an empty nonce make and it's a slice of byte and of 12. So it's going to look something like this. It'll be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 right? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 till 12. So 12 different values, all of them 0. That's what you create with this now. And now we will randomize the nuns. Okay, so we have created the empty nuns. Now we'll randomize it. We'll put uh, random values in it. And the way to do that is we'll say io dot read full random dot reader. So fill it with random values and error is not equal to nil. Panic error dot error. Awesome. What's the next step now? So on my screen, the next step is we pass all these values to create into the password based derivation key derivation function. Okay. So the password based key derivation function is available to us in a package of the same name p key p b k d f two and that function we pass the key the nuns 4096 as the number of iterations 32 as a length and sha one dot new as the algorithm so if you look here we are passing the password to encrypt the file the nuns the number of iterations sha one and the byte length which is 32 in our case and this is the number of iterations what you get back from his this is called as the derived key dk so we'll just in short it's dk this package that we're getting everything from is is this package pbkdf2 so now we have the derived key now we will create we will run it passed by the advanced encryption standard so we'll say aes dot new cipher dk and we'll get the block and we'll handle the error also so we'll say if error is not equal to nil panic Okay, so we have this now, the cipher block, and now we are going to use the Galois, <laughs> so whatever it is, you know, GCM, I'll call it DCM, so it's the new GCM function. So I'll say cipher dot new GCM function, and I'll pass in the block. And what you get back is AES GCM. If error is not equal to nil, panic. Error dot error. Okay. So as as you know, we did all these steps to 
to be able to run the seal function here which is what creates the uh, which is, is what converts the paint text to cipher text. So coming back here let us use the AES GCM dot seal function. This is what is going to take the plain text for us and send back the cipher text and you uh, append the nuns. So there is one thing that I have not drawn here but I have actually talked about it here is that we add the 12 byte nuns at the end of the encrypted file. So we want to do that now we want to append the nuns to the cipher text. and store that in the cipher text itself. So now we have the complete cipher text. Now I'm going to create a file source file for the encrypted data and want to write the data to the source file. So what you'll do now is we'll call it the destination file OS dot create I'll create that file handle the error also here panic and at the end of this function when this function uh, has done processing you want to close this file as well. So you have created the file now you just want to write the ciphertext into that file. So write the ciphertext into the file but this is the destination file so we will say destination file dot write and you will get the error if any if error is not equal to nil panic error okay so this was our encrypt function so far so good and as soon as i uh, hit uh, save it got me all the packages that i needed and now we want to work for the decrypt uh, function. The decrypt function is very similar. It takes in the, 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 the path of the file and the password with the help of which we will decrypt this. And first things first, you want to check if the file that's to be decrypted, the, the request that's coming for decryption, if the file even exists or not. So do the same thing was dot sat source was dot is not exist error and here you will and this is the error you're handling here and we're just saying panic error okay and actually some of the part from here is going to be similar so I will just um, copy this part all of this part till here I'll just copy it uh, once again after this so here you will have a SRC file where you'll open that source file and at the end you will close it also and here instead of plain text you'll just have cipher text because that's what is in the file now because you have already encrypted the file and you're passing the encrypted file to this decrypt function and that's why whatever is in there in the file is now cipher text so we have done in the decryption part we have, we're done with this check for the encrypted file open the encrypted file and read the text cipher text from the encrypted file all of this is done okay so the password that you will receive in this function will again be stored in the variable key and then we'll have a variable called salt which will basically have cipher text and length of cipher so without the last 12 okay and x dot encode to string the salt which is basically the nuns the last 12 is the nuns right you'll have it in stock in salt and we will use the hex package to decode this string okay. 
and we'll store that in str. Sorry, this will be months now. Okay. Okay, so what do you pass again in that function, the password based key derivation function for decryption, you pass the same password to, to uh, that will be used now to decrypt the byte length 32, chart 1, iterations 4096 and the nuns that we got from the last 12 uh, digits of the cipher text. And the same thing you do here, you say new cipher, sorry, new. Yeah, AES new cipher and you pass the derivation key, derivative key and you will again get the block and again you can handle the errors if error not, error not equal to nil and then you want to pass that block to uh, the cipher, AES cipher. So, what I will do is I will Yeah, we have already done that and now we want to pass it through the CGM, GCM sorry, yeah. So the same thing that we have done there, we are doing it here and now there is only one little difference uh, which is that instead of using the AES GCM dot um, seal function, we will just use AES GCM dot open function. So, here we will have the nuns, the cipher text which is everything apart from those last um, 12. And what you get back from this is the plain text. Okay, so what you're seeing now is uh, step by step, we're just looking at the diagram, and we are uh, converting a diagram into code. Okay, so our flowchart into code. Again, let's handle the error here, and then we'll again create the file like we did last time, the destination file. So, I will copy and paste that part here and now we will write plain text to this file. So, instead here we wrote the cipher text to the file and now we will write the plain text which we have received to the file. So, here what was happening in the encrypt function, what was happening is that you ran that function called uh, the seal function which gave you the cipher text. To run the seal function AES GCM seal function you had to uh, do all of these steps which is get the plain text and then create your nuns, have your password ready, uh, create a derived key with PB KDF function, uh, use advanced encryption standard, new cipher, create a block, cipher block, pass the cipher block uh, with GCM and get AES GCM and then you were able to call the seal function to get the cipher text with all those values. Here exactly the same things, you just had to call the AES GCM dot open function because this will give us the plain text from the cipher text. Cipher text is everything apart from those 12 last digits which actually was the nuns uh, in our case for nuns right, the salt uh, which we can convert into nuns here. And uh, then finally just like we did in the encryption file, we created a file and then we wrote plain text back into that file and now when we open up this file we will be able to access it right. So, as you can see I have a lot of errors and I am not at all scared because now when I go ahead and run this program, uh, I will come to know what the issues are. So, I will say go run encrypt png and here I see all of these issues. It says uh, file crypt 
to add file clip and yeah so xterm and file clip are not there that means I need to say go mod tidy so first I'll get these packages let's I can see some issue there but let's see if it still works yeah still the same issues I'm getting so let's try to fix it now one issue out here obviously is this path which is I've copied the link from my previous project now this is obviously my github and this should be the name of the project right and I'm and, and I'm calling file crypt package but the name of the project is wrong that I have to go and get from go mod so the name of the project is actually go file encryption in this case and I have to go and get it here and this issue will go away uh, <clears throat> now what we'll do is we'll again go and run go run encrypt img or png and now we'll get a list of issues okay so now uh, on line 68 file crypt line 68 file crypt as I can see it should have been error okay now let me check out line um, 83 line 83 key is not used yes because I was supposed to use key here by mistake I have written name and here also I can see one more issue it's key should have been key right uh, now the other thing I can see is um, 88 which is undefined yeah it's the same thing this was the issue line 88 all right so that's solved but now I can still see four issues in main.go so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and run this again uh, here now we can see some issues from main.go file and the um, first one is on 950 okay and then on line 66 and then on line 87 print line uh, 102 right so what I'm trying to show you here is with if you're working with technologies like Golang and Rust you don't have to worry at all about mistakes in the code so don't depend too much on extensions right so many people would tell you get extensions that help you uh, not make any mistakes in the code while writing the code uh, for spelling and for for uh, you know golang so don't i would suggest don't uh, don't depend too much on that as you can see i, I wrote everything myself and uh, i just depended on the on the golang compiler to tell me the issues and i just solved them one by one so just just depend on golang compiler because when you're in an interview when you're giving the interview for some company uh, you're not sure what kind of environment you'll get to write the code with mostly it's an online environment right and you have somebody on a call you have an online environment and you have to write the code in that online environment that won't have the extensions that you want and that you work with so it's highly recommended that you don't depend on extensions i've had many of my friends get into a lot of trouble because of that um, but but know how to work with the golang compiler a lot like get very very good at debugging code okay so uh, now things should work so it says it asks me to enter the password and I will enter the password it will ask me to confirm the password I'll confirm the password it will say file successfully protected try to open up the file I'm not able to okay and now what I'll do is I'll just run this um, again with instead of encrypt it will be decrypt and I'll just enter the password I had used earlier and now as you can see I can check out the file I can look at the file okay so this was our project everything works perfectly fine thank you so much for watching uh, this I would say is, is uh, an intermediate level project it's not very advanced it's not very simple uh, like it's not a beginner level project probably and it's not an advanced project also somewhere uh, in the middle but I hope you learned a lot thank you so much for watching if you haven't subscribed to this channel make sure you subscribe I'll come up with awesome content like this in the future. Thank you so much.